Hello, everyone. Welcome to this live chat. Um, please give me a short sign here in the comments if you can hear me, uh, if everything is all right with my voice, if you can see me, if everything is good. Um, then just maybe give a thumbs up here in the comments. I'm going to look um, what you're saying, if you understand me. Um, hello to everyone who is here. And yes, welcome to this live chat. Welcome. I think it's the fourth live chat already that we're having here on YouTube or the fifth even, I think fourth. And um, that's actually quite something. And I'm looking super forward to it. Actually, I thought it's maybe not such a good timing because it's such a lovely summer evening outside. And um, so I'm very happy that all of you are here. I hope every one of you grabbed the drink like I did. Mm. And I was actually thinking about putting this live chat outside. Um, but the problem was that my Wi-Fi didn't go to outside and I had no connection there. So I guess I'm the only one who is sitting inside with this lovely summer weather. It's, I think, like, I don't know, 28 degrees or something like this here in Switzerland. So it's really, really beautiful. Um, yeah. What are we going to talk about today? Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is actually what is next and what happened in the last month. And I think some of you already got some who follow regularly on the channel, I think, already know what's up because I gave some hints every now and then and I as well asked a lot of questions about some things. And um, so many of you already know where the last journeys went to. And um, yeah, actually, I came back, back from the Oman journey and um, right after the Oman journey, I didn't have exactly much time to rest. Um, because the next journey was already waiting. So it was really like back to back. And um, I flew from Oman. I flew home first, but then I pretty quick went to the United States of America. And um, most people of you already know this because um, I at one point asked you on a channel for uh, suggestions suggestions for the whole east coast of the united states and actually i got a lot of comments um, where i should go which routes to take and um, that was super super nice so this journey that i did in the united states was quite different than um, most other journeys because um, i for the first time really basically only went to the places that you the watchers and followers of this channel suggested to me and um, I actually just, um, yeah, to update you, you're probably wondering which motorcycle I took in the United States. And um, that's still the same motorcycle that I bought for the trip that I did from Los Angeles to Miami in 2021. Um, I bought a motorcycle in Los Angeles and um, took it with me to Miami. And um, I left it in Miami. And now I went back to the US to ride more with this bike that I bought in 2021. I actually thought about selling it after the trip in 2021, but then um, the US is so big and there are so many things to see. So I just thought, okay, I'm gonna keep it and I'm gonna keep riding a little bit in the US too. And um, yeah, here I also wanted to say, because I get so many questions all the time, especially with the Oman series where my motorcycle how did how I shipped my motorcycle to Oman, for example, which I actually didn't because in Oman I rented the motorcycle. And I have like all these information about my gear, motorcycles, always in the description of the video below the video. So whenever you wonder what's going on and um, what motorcycle it is that I'm riding on, you can basically find it in the description of the video. And yeah, Oman I rented now in the US, I was back on my own bike that somehow doesn't feel like my own bike because I always feel like the fox that I have here in Europe that I did the Africa journey with and many other trips that this is my one and only bike but um, actually that's not true so yeah I picked that bike up in Miami and then I went on the trip 
And actually the first um, challenge that I encountered in the US was regist registering the bike because um, I registered it the first time in Los Angeles and it expired. So I had to re-register it in Miami and in Florida, and then I could go on this trip. And um, just to prepare you a little bit, what's coming, because this will as well be the next videos that will be here on the channel. Um, I rode basically the whole East Coast of the United States of America. And this time I did it all by myself, no travel partner, just me and the, the Black Beauty, the beautiful Black Tannery. And um, we started in Miami and um, went along the coast. We went basically first to Georgia, um, North, South Carolina, North Carolina, then inland, did fantastic rides like the Blue Ridge Parkway, Outer Banks that many of you recommended as well to me. And um, then actually we're heading to Virginia and West Virginia, where I always wanted to go. And then did like a bigger circle inland um, to kind of, until the Canadian border more or less, um, to return then to Boston. I always say we, in this case, only me and the motorcycle. That's um, the we in this story. And um, yeah, so that was briefly the route um, that I was taking in the United States. And while I was in the US, actually, I was um, editing all the Oman videos. And when I was um, editing those, I realized that it's actually quite busy when you're riding the whole day. Um, then you as well, I don't know, I guess people who of you who as well film and take a lot of pictures know that um, it's not kind of done with the riding in the end of the evening. If you take a lot of videos, you have to save those videos on your hard disk drive. Um, you have to delete or um, make some space for new videos on the drone, on the normal camera, and um, on all the GoPros. So it's always like a little bit, uh, um, how do you say? I mean, you always have to do something in the evening. And um, then in addition, I had to um, edit the Oman videos. And I at one point realized on the US journey that that was actually a lot traveling, like full time and every day, because I think many people who travel like long term um, that I know that are making videos for YouTube, they always take some days off in between. And I basically didn't do that on the US journey. I was on the road riding each single day for, I think I was there a little bit over a month. And um, yeah, I realized that was quite a lot. Um, so I decided that when I came back from the US journey, which was early summer, um, I decided to take this little break that you realized here on the YouTube channel because the next journey was already waiting. So all my journeys that I did this year were kind of like really back to back. Um, it started with Oman. Um, then I went to the US. I came back from the US and pretty much very short after I went to the next trip. And the next trip, most people of you who watch the channel too already know where it is because I posted one video, not last week, I think the week before last week. And that was of a volcanic eruption in Iceland. And that was the second journey that I did that I have not published here yet on the channel. And um, that was, again, a month riding in Iceland. And um, yeah, that was super exciting. Um, I rode with my travel partner again, and I think I took quite some amazing footage of this journey. Um, I actually thought about maybe posting it first before the US journey, because it felt like when I came back, it felt like closer to me. But, and I already published this volcano video because I felt like, I don't know, it was just like something that was like, felt to me like it should be on time and not like a year later when the volcano is already not erupted, erupting anymore. But um, yeah, but then I thought about it and I decided to stick with the chronological order and first show you the journey from the United States because um, I just think it was a very great trip too. And um, so many things I saw, people I met and yeah. 
yeah, I just read here someone saying, shockingly, the Medaille volcano gap up already. Um, exactly, this volcano in Iceland that I saw and that I hiked to. I can highly recommend this video if you have not seen it yet. Um, you should really watch it. I, that was like one of the most fantastic things to see. And yeah, the erupting volcano already stopped. So it's over now. And that's even more why I feel that it was a good thing to post that video already, even though the Iceland series will come a little bit later. And yeah, you have to see, I made a lot of notes with your questions and everything. So I know what I'm talking about. And um, yeah, actually, um, the decision for Iceland was, I thought I want to talk about it too, because um, it was actually a very spontaneous decision. Um, while I had planned to go to the US, um, because my motorcycle was still there, so I was kind of was clear to me that I would continue riding there a little bit. But Iceland was actually not on mine and as well not on my travel partner's agenda too much. But um, we actually both would have really liked to go to India and Pakistan because I love Pakistan and I think India is always such a huge experience and I would have loved to ride in mountains there. But it turned out to be very difficult because we wanted to take our own motorcycles and um, shipping costs turned out to be crazy high to India. Um, it was like, I think, one way $4,000 or $5,000 per bike. And that's just crazy. I mean, you can buy a new bike for that. And um, then we even thought about buying a bike in India and taking it. But the problem is you can't really ride from India to Pakistan if it's your on bike because you need in Kane and the Kane is very expensive too. So in the end, um, it was just a financial obstacle that kind of like was holding us back from traveling somewhere else. Then actually we thought about going to maybe South Africa and um, Namibia. I would have liked that even though it would have felt a little bit wrong because I'm still dreaming of continuing this Africa journey that I started here on a channel with and that I had to end because of Corona. And um, it would have felt kind of wrong to just do South Africa and Namibia. Um, but it was the wrong time anyways, because um, then the rainy season in South Africa was starting and um, yeah, so we had to find something else. And then by um, coincidence, we actually found out that shipping to Iceland was not so expensive. And we both really felt like traveling with our um, own bikes and not with something else. Um, so yeah, that was then the decision and we said, okay, let's do this. And we actually, I think, booked the shipping of our bikes 14 days before we went to Iceland. So very, very short notice. Is it possible to buy motorcycles and foreigner in India? Actually, um, it's very difficult, but um, we both, me and my travel partner as well, would have some contacts in India who would have bought the motorcycle for us and who we would have trusted enough to, um, to let a motorcycle be bought for us. Um, but um, the problem was anyway, is that we could not have gone to Pakistan with it. So um, this whole plan kind of didn't work out. I guess the next time um, Pakistan and India will be when I hopefully will be able to ride again all the way from Europe to there like I did on my world trip. Because that was a really, really fantastic journey. And um, yeah, then I think the big question is what's next? And I already saw a comment here from our friend Kupis. Hello, um, Leah, you still have travel plans for this year. And actually, um, I don't know yet because I already traveled a lot this year. Um, I think I don't I don't think many of you have seen those videos. I once did a video with um, three other motorcycle girls with Kinga, Nora and um, Egle. And you can find that on my um, main page in the bottom. There is like a section that's called live chats. And um, that's the live chat where we talk about how to finance uh life on the road and there i as well talked a lot about my way to do this 
And um, basically my life model is that um, I try to travel like three to four months a year. And um, the rest, I try to be at home and um, work here and as well have the life here because I really like to be at home too. I like to see my family. I like to see my friends. And um, so for me, this is perfect to be able to travel only like a few months a year, um, maximum four or five months and um, be the rest at home and as well do normal jobs here. And um, yes, so I already traveled a lot this year. So I don't know if I will be able to travel much more. Um, we will see. Um, I don't know yet. And yeah, because I was a month in Oman, a month in, a bit more than a month in the US, and now a month in Iceland. So this was already a lot. But 2023 for sure will be very exciting. So don't you worry, guys. And yes, I as well um, thought about maybe taking a little bit of time off of social media in the beginning of 2023 to have a little bit more time for some personal projects that I'm working on. But I will tell you more about that soon too when it's the time. For now, we really have so much, I have so much content from all these journeys that I did this year and that I didn't manage to publish yet. So I really hope that now again, every week there will be a video. And we will start with the US journey, like with the Oman journey, the first video of the US trip will be like an overview of the whole trip. And it will not be published next week, but in two weeks. Um, I'm currently working on it. I thought I would finish it until next week, but it's not part of possible because um, this first intro video that is longer is a little bit more, it just needs a little bit more time and um, effort. And I as well want that it's good. So I hope you excuse that this will take another week. But from then, every week there will be a video again. And I'm... Um, Looking super forward to that because I really missed posting here. Um, I already saw that there were a few um, questions coming in. Um, are you planning to travel in Turkey? Actually, Turkey would have been another option for this year. But then um, before we decided to go to Iceland, we actually thought about going like east um, direction Turkey and Georgia as well. I would have loved to go to Georgia too. But um, then there was like this crazy heat wave um, all over Europe already so early in the year. And um, I was just like, after the Oman trip where we had so much heat, I was like, I really don't feel like being like boiled on a motorcycle again. So I hope to travel to Turkey soon, um, but um, not planned this year anymore. I will come to the first question and um, I have that here and it's actually a question of someone who is um, watching today and that's one of the, I think, my earliest followers here on YouTube, that's Toto, hello Toto, and he asked, are there, are the increasing prices, inflation going to change or affect your travel plans? And I think that's a very interesting question because I was thinking about it a lot when we traveled Iceland because Iceland was so expensive. Um, I think I've not been to a more expensive country recently. And at the same time, it was so booked that you basically didn't have a choice besides of maybe sleeping in a tent, but it was sometimes just pouring in five degrees. So it's well not the best weather to stay in a tent. And you really just had to like book the hotel that was available. And no matter what it cost, because there was nothing else in the surrounding of like 300, 400 kilometers nearly. And um, that was actually crazy. Um, but I actually as well don't know if it will change my travel plans because I think it's very difficult to kind of like pick your destinations because something is always expensive. If I would have gone to Pakistan and India now, um, traveling would have been of course much cheaper than in Iceland. It would have probably been much cheaper everywhere else in the world than Iceland. But um, 
On the other hand, I would have had the issue to rent a motorcycle or buy a motorcycle or somehow figure out this motorcycle issue. And everybody of you who already rent a motorcycle somewhere knows that this is not super cheap either. So you always have these costs, even if you go to not so expensive countries, you might have like huge shipping costs for your motorcycle. And that's of course easier if you're if you're on a really long journey or on a trip around the world, or like I planned before COVID, go around Africa in several stages, because then your bike is waiting for you where you continue and um, you don't have this problem to spend all the time, all this money for renting something or buying something. And then of course, um, you're gonna be in much more cheap countries than Europe or the US or, yeah. I mean, it's just crazy as well. Hotel prices since Corona kind of exploded. So that's, I think, pretty shocking when traveling because it just got so much more expensive. But um, I actually don't think that it will really affect my travel plans because I still want to go to the places that I choose. And um, now, actually, it affected my travel plan. So I'm lying a little bit because, I mean, we didn't go to India and Pakistan because the shipping was so expensive. And um, that's, that's a bit COVID's fault, too. A few years ago, it would have been much cheaper. So, yes, we changed our travel plans because of the financial point. But um, in the end, I still think if I have a destination that I really want to go to, like um, Oman, for example, I really, really wanted to go. Um, I think I would still try to make it possible. I would still try to raise enough money before and work enough to be able to do this trip, rent a motorcycle or do whatever is required. Because I think it's, it's of course a privilege, but it's as well, um, it's as well very, very nice to work like to this goal to know like, okay, I really want to do this. And then eventually being able to do it. Um, one question actually that is asked all the time a lot is what's your age and what's your height? And so I was like, maybe I should, I should um, introduce myself with that. Um, I'm 35 years old and I'm one meter 78, which I think is like five nine or something like this in um, American measurements but I actually don't know exactly. Um, yeah, and um, actually I'm very tall for uh, for a woman. And so for me, it's mostly easy to ride motorcycles. And I often get like comments from especially male followers who say like, ah, oh, if you're riding it, <clears throat> I for sure will um, be able to ride it too. And that's sometimes actually not the case because women as well have longer legs than men. So um, whatever motorcycle I ride, even if you're like 180, um then like two centimeters taller than me it doesn't necessarily mean that um the bike will still fit you but um yeah i always say as well like hey don't um, measure your bike because you see me riding it but measure it by trying it because otherwise you never know um does riding cause health problems with your back um actually i don't think so i sometimes i sometimes have some back problems but that's more i think generally me and then i do a little bit of yoga and stretching and then it mostly goes away or i as well remind myself to stand more up during riding because that helps a lot too if you're if you're always like sitting you know in one place and you're like mm, that, don't move then of course um, you get much more problems but if you stand up if you move a little bit on the bike if you stretch while riding um, then you can avoid a lot of these problems that like sitting in one place can cause um, okay one of the next questions let's see um, uh, some other questions that are asked um, to me a lot and I thought maybe I'm gonna give a little answer to that is um, many people always want to know a lot about visas, documents and costs, uh, about bike rental costs and all that things. And um, for me that's always very difficult to answer because first these things change very fast. Um, for example, hotel costs, um, I think they doubled kind of like in the United States of America between 2018 
and now. So that's completely crazy. And um, as well, it depends a lot on where you're coming from. So example, for example, if I tell you what I paid for my visa, that must not be necessarily true for you too, because visa costs can be very different from country to country and as well um, where you apply it. And as well, other documents like the Carnet de Passage that you need for some countries to travel to, which is like this customs document for your vehicle. In Germany, you have to pay a deposit and it costs 200 euros. In India, you have to pay the same deposit, but it costs, I think, 1,000 or 1,400 euros. So it's very, very expensive. And um, there's, uh, there are really a lot of different answers to these questions. And I sometimes just feel it's better that I'm not telling you what I'm actually paying for the stuff, but that you inform yourself because it will not help you anyways. And um, another reason why I'm doing this is that people actually think that I'm giving, if, I, if I'm saying like prices or something like this, people easily think that I'm giving wrong information. And I realized that on the video that I did about the helmets, um, I compared the three adventure helmets that I was riding a lot. And I mentioned the price as one category. And um, I realized that a lot of people were commenting about the prices and about, um, about as well the prices of competitors and so on and so on. And of course, I was looking on the markets of the European, of, of the prices on the European market. And that can be completely different than, for example, the American market. So people from America was like, hey, what are you saying? That's not true. And of course, it is true in Europe, but it's not true in the United States. That's why um, my experience is better to not um, mention too much of that because it's so quickly outdated and I as well want my videos to last kind of longer than two price changes and as Toto as well said um, inflation and rising costs so in order to make my medium more timeless and um, to be able to really travel with them as well in the future I think it's just better to use them as travel guides, but I think it's always the best if you're planning a trip to really research the prices at your time of traveling. And as well, if you have guidebooks, don't rely on the guidebooks because even if they're two years old, prices might really be different now than they were back then. <clears throat> what happens? <laughs> What happened to the Italian diva? Um, that's the bike of my travel partner. Many of you know it as the Italian diva because it went with us to the North Cape journey and it always had problems. And the Italian diva was actually sold, but it was sold for another Italian diva. And I might introduce you to the new Italian diva in some of the future videos. I have to convince my travel partner that he writes his new diva in one of the next videos. We will see. <laughs> um, let's see if there are any more questions here. Um, otherwise I have as well, I think the questions here that I see are always a little bit delayed um, because this program that I'm streaming with is kind of like, I think a little bit slow. Um, someone asked, is it possible to join you on your travels? And actually that's not possible at the moment. I was thinking about maybe doing some guided tours at one point. I think it would be actually quite nice to do some guided tours maybe in Switzerland or somewhere in Europe where I really know the places. Um, but um, it's, it's just very difficult to plan. And there is as well a lot of things like insurance and a lot of things that are very difficult to figure out here in Europe. So I kind of stayed away from that for now, but you never know in the, in the future. Um, on my normal journeys that you see here um, on the channel, it's not possible to join me, but sometimes I'm meeting people um, who are followers, which is actually very funny because they're always surprised in Iceland. I met a few in the US actually too. But um, in Iceland especially, and they were like, oh, you're here now. And I was like, yeah. And um, that's kind of cool to meet people on the road who uh, as well follow 
the journey. Um, do you still own Cleo? I actually do. She is retired now, so she is at the moment not having a valid license plate um, because she got like a lot of problems and had a lot of like leaking stuff. And um, the problem is not that the bike is bad, that the problem is like all vehicles, if you don't drive it regularly, um, they just they just don't work anymore. And or they just get a lot of issues because they get old and the parts get kind of like stiff. And that's what happened to Cleo when I bought my Tenere. Um, so yeah, I still own her and she's in my garage, but I don't drive her at the moment. I'm still thinking what to do with her, but I didn't find a solution yet. Um, meanwhile, I just look at her and I'm happy about her. Um, Oh, your videos had a lot during the lockdowns. That's very nice to hear. I'm so happy about all of you who are always joining these journeys and um, are such a big part of this travel crew. I mean, I probably it would not be so much fun for me if um, all of you wouldn't comment so nicely. And I as well think it's such a nice community, which um, is actually strange, but um, on my other social media platforms, I always feel maybe it's YouTube or maybe it's a social media platform or maybe it's you guys. I don't know. But um, on all my other video platforms, I feel like there is much more, much more anger and hatred and hostility. And um, YouTube is a very nice platform. I feel like people really comment and are engaged. And it's rarely that they are like trolls who just like, you know, talk shit. Um, but on other platforms that actually happens a lot and um, that makes me very happy because um, yeah it's a very nice travel crew with that we have here um, what did you study and what kind of work do you do um, I studied history of art business and law <laughs> because I um, initially wanted to go into the art market but um, I actually never worked there. Um, I pretty quick during my university studies already started to work as a journalist and um, I'm still working as that. I'm working as a journalist and as a consultant and as a YouTube filmmaker, um, thanks to you. Um, someone as well asked a um, very nice question. I have to see if I can find it here. Um, where is where was that? Um, someone asked the question um, if there is like any device or anything that I'm missing in my in my travels, and um, if there is, I, I don't find it. Um, here, as a motorcyclist, do you find any missing feature that you would have really wanted, but no one provides? And um, I found that question actually very interesting. Um, maybe you guys answered it too. What, in your opinion, um, is a feature or a gear or something that you're completely missing while riding or even while traveling? I think it doesn't necessarily need to be riding a motorcycle. Is there anything that you're missing? Because I have one thing that I would really like, um, especially when traveling on a motorcycle. And um, both of them kind of exist, but they exist separately. And um, I would really like to have a weather map, like a live radar of the weather forecast that is like over my navigation system. So I would like to have my Garmin navigation system and then be able to have like the live weather map over it. So I can see where there is like sun and where's rain and where's the big clouds coming and stuff like this. Because I sometimes feel like, you know, you look at the sky and so many times it happened to me, I was like, okay, it looks much better if I turn right now instead of left. And I did it and um, didn't get into the rain. I think it would be very helpful um, to first know how long the bad weather will be if you're getting into bad weather and second to maybe find a way around the bad weather if um, that's possible and I kind of um, I mean you, I have that on my phone I have like a weather radar but it's not like over my navigation system so while I'm riding I cannot like see where my routes exactly are so that would be very nice if someone would um, make that 
I would use that. And actually another um, part or gear that I would really like is I have not yet found the perfect bag to put on the back of my bike. I always use a bag, it's, it's called the duffel bag from North Face when I go to warm countries where I know it's not raining so much like on the Oman trip because I think it's a very good bag that is um, very practical from how it's made and it has two shoulder straps so you can wear it as a backpack and I love that because I always feel like you know I have so much other stuff to carry I have all my um, technical gear I have my helmet and um, I really find it so practical to not only have like a shoulder strap but to have two backpack straps to put it on the shoulders and I know that there are several other solutions from as well um, brands like uh, Moscow Moto and things like that but somehow I have not found a bag yet that is really like I wanted because the North Face bag um, if you travel with that which I did in the US which was stupid it's not completely water resistant. And then I have another bag um, it's from a brand called Ortlieb, which you roll on top, which is 100% waterproof. Um, but that doesn't have these two shoulder straps. And I as well tried a thousand other bags and I still didn't find the bag that I love. And I especially as well wanted in the color red. So I have high expectations to my bag. Um, yeah. Ah, not German, but Kalimoto Navigation App has it with weather radar overlay. That's very good to know. They actually approached me at one point and asked me if I want to try their app. And because I'm always very hesitant with tr not trying things that are offered to me, because I rather try things that I found myself. Um, I told them they were very nice. I told them I might come back to them if I feel like I want to try it but um, yeah maybe that's not a time when you say it has that feature that sounds actually awesome and I see good rain has it bites of separate openings at the legs that's a very good good thing too I actually um there are rain pants that have that um just to tell you there are some rain pants and I have those that you can sip completely from up to the complete bottom and you can kind of like sip them in both ways so you can open them in both ways completely and that's the best one you have to look for them um i actually don't know which mine are from i think like ixs or something like that um but they good and they exist but I think rain gear is always very difficult because I always feel like it's getting into somewhere, the rain. I mean, it's you after like six hours and pouring rain, um, it's just sneaking in somewhere at your neck or at your boots or wherever. Um, someone as well asked me, um, not here, but um, in the questions, which editing software I would recommend for beginners or um, which editing software I'm using. I'm as well posting always the editing software in the description of the video. I'm using Final Cut Pro from Apple and I actually don't really have a recommendation for beginners. I would probably just like try with whatever your computer has in um, if you have an Apple computer it's um, iMovie but um, to be honest, I find iMovie more difficult to handle than Final Cut Pro because it has so limited options. And um, I think that's the case for nearly all freeware that you can find when it comes to editing. And um, there are basically like three, I think, really good editing softwares, and that's Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, which is from Adobe Photoshop, and um, DaVinci, which I have never tried, but which is supposed to be pretty good too. And I would just think about if you're really serious about um, editing more videos and as well want an easy handling, I think I would um, suggest DaVinci or Final Cut Pro because Premiere Pro is a bit more difficult. And um, yeah, just that with those, with those, it's like 300 euros, but I think it's very worth it. But, um... Ah, a lot of people give me now tips for um, 
for bags. I will actually later look at those and um, see if there's something that is fulfilling all the needs that I'm having. Um, and here are as well more um, tips that you can have for videos, shortcut. Um, I actually don't know that. So that's awesome that you guys are having all these tips. Um, there's an, there was another question um, actually from a woman who asked um, physical and mental health precautions during riding and night stays in hotels, especially in wild remote areas as a female. And um, I think that's an interesting but very difficult to answer question because physical and mental health precautions as a woman um, and traveling, I mean, I think being like on good health and being fit is probably like the best thing that you can do before traveling. But um, it for sure as well doesn't hurt to, to make a class um, and know how to self-defend yourself. Um, I actually know how to do that, but I always as well think if the moment comes that you get robbed or that something happens to you and someone really like, I don't know, tries to do something, some harm to you, I don't know if all of that helps. I mean, if I know how to, you know, if someone grabs my arm, I know how to handle it. But if someone stands in front of me with a gun pointing to my face, that would be a completely different story. And actually, I don't think that there's so much you can still do. And um, that's the same with basically all things that you can take that make you feel more safe, like tear gas or something like that. Um, if you feel like it makes you feel more safe, then I think you should carry it. Um, but I think as a female, um, unfortunately, the world is how it is. And it's just a bit more dangerous for women than for men in the case that men maybe get robbed. But women as well um, can experience some even worse things like being raped. And um, I think that's just a reality that we all have to face and that hopefully will change in the future with more people being aware of it and as well more people trying to protect women if they realize that they're being harassed by other people. But of course that can happen when traveling too. So I think there are no things that you can do to make sure that this never happens to you because it can as well happen to you if you um, walk out here on a door in your own country. But that's just a sad reality, unfortunately. And I, I don't, <clears throat> I actually, the ones who read my book probably know this, I really um, don't carry any like tear gas or any weapons with me, but um, I was gifted some knives actually several times to be able to protect myself. And um, I got a little lesson in Kyrgyzstan, how to hide with knives. So don't mess around with me. I know how to, I know how to use knives. <clears throat> I have a question, I'm a male motorcycler. Which dresses do you find best suited for tours? I mean, do the regular biker jacket and jeans that are best, or are you comfortable with casual dress also? Uh, I'm a big fan of all the gear, all the time. I actually was not like this when I started to ride my motorcycle in the beginning. Um, I was very much... I mean, I was riding a motorcycle in dresses and sandals. And I think that's looking back, I think that's completely stupid. And um, I think the longer you ride, the more you realize what really can happen if you fall. And um, to be honest, I as well don't want my skin to kiss the asphalt and being like rubbed away from, from onto my bone only because I was too lazy or too warm to wear proper gear. And so I think for touring anyways, you should wear something proper. Um, for me personally, I wear mostly this textile outfits, even though they are, of course, not the most sexy. I also have, have leather jackets. Um, I wore them a lot before, but um, now I'm mostly sticking to um, textile. But I have actually different kind of outfits that I wear. Um, for example, when I'm just riding here around town, I'm 
and it's warm, I'm wearing like a Danisa outfit that I would never wear for traveling because I think their zippers are not good. And in general, the, <clears throat> they don't have big pockets. And I think in general, the quality is not as good as some of the other gear I have. And um, that's why I only wear it around here in town because I think it looks good and it's um, nice and it's the proper gear. But I would not trust it to last several months in South Africa. Please tell everyone that US travel is safe. The media sometimes paints a very negative picture. I think that is actually true for many, many, many countries in this world that um, the media always paints a very parallel pictures of the country. And when you're there, it's mostly much, much better um, than you expect. Some countries not, but um, many countries. And yes, um, I felt very safe when traveling the US. Where did you purchase your one red dress? Oh my God, I purchased that in at Zara. Zara, you know, <laughs> I, I have not been in there for years. I bought it in 2015 and then it went with me on this trip around the world in 2016. And since then it goes on every trip with me, but it's meanwhile so broken and ripped on all sides and everywhere that I always have to wear pants under it or, um, I don't know, something because it's actually, I mean, you can't even wear it anymore alone. Um, yeah, so that's, um, that's, I think, more or less, we have, we have already chatted a very long time, I think like 45 minutes. I'm going to look one more time to my questions that I have here. Um, someone asked where to travel to, to in autumn in Europe. And basically all of Europe is pretty beautiful in autumn. I mean, not all, I would maybe not go to Sweden, but I think all of like Europe here. And my absolutely, um, what, what I basically do every year, and I guess I will very soon do it again. I travel to the Dolomites in um, Italy every autumn because I think it's the best time because autumn is not the high season anymore. Um, high seasons are ooh, summer and winter, of course, with all the skiing and um, autumn is kind of off season. So it's much more empty than usually. And it's just a perfect time to travel the Dolomites. And I think they're so beautiful and um, it's perfect place to ride. And um, it's perfect place to ride asphalt with your motorcycles. And if you continue a little bit from the, from the Dolomites, um, you can enter an area that's called Friaul. And there's a lot of like off-road stuff. So you have like the Dolomites and right next to it, you have like an area where you can ride a little bit more off-road. And if you connect both of this, you really have a several day trip that is very, very nice. Do you have some list of visited countries so far? Actually, I don't. I even didn't count them. I'm not a country counter. Um, I have no clue how many countries I have visited in total. I only know because, um, not only because I um, wrote a book about it, I know that I visited 50 countries alone on my trip around the world. But then on the other hand, actually, if you're in Europe, you can visit quite a lot of countries in a very short time because the countries in Europe are so small. So. I'm planning on starting my own motor vlog on an XT350 on the west coast of North America, California mostly. Any need to know tips or suggestions? I guess you mean um, suggestions about starting your YouTube channel. And I would say um, you just should watch some of the, there are thousands of tutorials um, of best practices, how to post on YouTube, because it's very important that you set the right key tag tags to your videos, um, that you make a nice thumbnail, and all of these things. I think you don't really need to, I mean, what I never do is I never try to clickbait. Um, I know many people do that and it works quite well, I think, but um, it's not for me. And I think that's as well not my content because I like to provide information and travel information. And so I don't wanna have like this flashy 
titles and stuff like this. I just keep it simple. And um, I guess it works. You guys are still here. So that's good enough. Um, someone else asked here, can we expect a new book? I'm actually not that sure yet because um, I would have maybe written a book about my journey if we would have finished this trip around um, Africa, but that didn't happen so far. And um, maybe at one point I will write again. Maybe at one point I will write as well fiction. I actually am very tempted to do that, to maybe try to write a novel at one point. How do you relax, Leah? Do you watch YouTube Overlanders? That's a very good question. And it's a bit embarrassing. I'm actually not watching a lot of YouTube at all. And um, I watch the channels of people I know. And um, that's actually a lot of motorcycles. I watch some other travel channels. I watch like a few sailing channels and um, a few channels of normal travelers, but none of those regularly. So I'm always, you know, if I have like some spare minutes, like every three months, I maybe watch, but um, no, I don't. So when, and it's kind of as well, I feel like this traveling and writing about it, it's kind of my job. So um, this is nothing that I do when I'm relaxing. I'm watching a Netflix series or something else and um, reading a good book or something like that or just go out with friends to a nice dinner and talk about completely different things and traveling. And that is basically, yeah, how I relax. So guys, I guess um, this was it for now. Um, I hope I answered most of your questions. And I as well hope that you will enjoy all the content that's coming up now. I will do my best that it's nice. Um, the US journey, I think, will be very interesting too, because I actually was traveling alone again. And I realized a big difference because um, normally I fly the drone and my travel partner rides. And now I all of a sudden had like no travel partner who was driving and who I could film with the drone which made it much more difficult for me to film. But um, on the other hand, you have a lot of nice like, experiences when you're traveling alone. So um, um, we only just started. Hey, we don't since just start. We're in already 50 minutes. I, I think always think that time flies a lot here too. 53 minutes already, wow. Um, I always think before I do the chat, I think like, okay, 30 minutes and then it's over because then I answered all questions and um, what else should I talk about? But then we're sitting here and um, I'm feeling like that too. I didn't even have my drink. I don't know. Mm. So guys, thank you so much for watching and um, hope to see you soon. And don't forget the video. It will not be on next Thursday. It will be the Thursday after, let me look on the, um, on the date very quick. It will be September the 8th. So September the 8th, the first episode of the new adventure. Lovely to see all of you and have a nice summer evening. <laughs>